Hello everyone, nice to have you all back for another episode of our 107 channel. Today's topic, failure of the central locking system, locating culprits, changing and repair. We will demonstrate the checking at this 560 SL from 1987, having the latest updated central locking system being mounted in 1986, they made a leap forward, changing the components mounted for the vacuum locking system. How to distinguish different components and their year of production is being explained in this video. Isolating problems, where to look, repair it yourself, all this right after introduction. Before we start bolting, let me show you the different components involved in this vacuum locking system. How do they work together? Please see schematic on the left hand side. With all three generations, they keep their individual position, so you do not have to chase around the car looking for them. They always remained at the same place. The actuators for each door are in the door behind the door card at the rear end of the door. Lock for the boot and the tank door are in the boot and the vacuum pump as well. Let us start at the driver's door. Door card has been removed previously to speed this up. Removal of door card without damaging it has been the topic with a previous video. Link to that video is in the description below. Take your time. You will later regret for having been in a hurry for no reason. Once the door card is gone, off you go. Please see picture on the left. This bolt is holding the linkage gear in place. The actuator is sitting right here at the bottom at the end of the door. Two wires for current and a rather rigid yellow hose as a vacuum line. When turning the key in the keyhole, this will activate this actuator either pushing or pulling that pushrod linkage gear to lock or unlock the door. Here we go, a close up of the lock mechanism. This linkage rod is being connected to the vacuum controlled actuator at bottom of door. See where my finger is, power supply and the yellow vacuum line. Let us pretend I bolt the door that's it, locked. I now turn the key in the keyhole and you see, linkage is moving and bolt is moving downwards to unlock door. In the boot next to the battery is the vacuum pump. By turning it upside down you can tell if the pump is of the last generation. The elder pumps do have a black cover at the bottom. After 1986, they changed that to sort of whitish. Part number is right here on picture on the left hand side. They usually stick the pumps in rubber foam envelope like boxes, which is obviously gone missing here. So this pump is doing the vacuum job. Right above the pump is this hazard emergency switch for the tank door. Imagine a vacuum pump failure for some reason, at least you can fill her up with fuel. When pulling at the red knob, you unlock the tank door. When you press the red knob, the tank door is locked. When pulling it, you unlock the tank door again. Footwell passenger side, the fuse box. On the inside of the cover is a fuse circuit plan telling us what is what for. At bottom row of fuses it is number 11 for the central locking vacuum pump as shown on the panel. 11 it is. When pulling out the glove box you see the T-split right away. If your vacuum system fails this is one of the first places to look. This T-section often loses its flexible and therefore sealing properties and is leaking through cracks. Well, let me say air intrusion. It is getting porous and over the years, well, 
and then it will allow air intrusion. Actuator of lock of boot right at the left hand side of the lock. Remove carpet carefully. This is the actuator. If this one needs replacement, be careful to order the right spare part. The one for the boot lid is different in comparison to the ones at the doors. But connectors, sockets and plugs are all the same. Cables enter at the bottom. This one here is yellow for a change. Actuator seems to be stronger in build in comparison to the ones at the doors. Strange. Before checking the yellow vacuum lines, let's start easy with a multimeter and see if the pump is getting some current at all. First step, pull connective wires from socket of pump, which are at the smaller end of the pump. This socket with two pins, connect multimeter to the pump. Well, we need some 12 volts for the pump, at least 10 volts. If you got an anti-theft system installed, the connector must be disabled first. Please see picture. It is this one. Disconnect this one first, your immobilizer. Otherwise, no current for the pump. It is like a dead switch behind the glove box. Well, pump seems to be functioning. Now check if there is a leak in the vacuum lines. A simple hand pump with a gauge will do this job for us. A simple hand pump like this will do the job. You create an absolute vacuum in the lines by watching the needle at the dial. You see if the vacuum lasts for a minute. If not, check the lines and replace them bit by bit until circuit is airtight. If the pump is not functioning anymore, make sure to order the right pump to the corresponding year of make of your car. The ones with a white bottom are not interchangeable with the ones with a black bottom. There is no way around it. Don't start trying. Another culprit could be cracks or air intrusion of the reservoir that looks like spheres stuck together. Mostly 3 by 5 therefore 15 spheres put together. This combo is hidden behind the wheel arch front right hand side. This reservoir is needed to have pressure left for opening and closing the doors for some 10 times or so without firing up the car, therefore activating the vacuum pump in your trunk. And of course, if there are cracks on the surface of the spheres or at entry or exit of vacuum lines, the system will not work either. Please see picture on the left. Over the years, the connections where it is being stuck together lose their elastic properties and crack, therefore not airtight anymore. We have checked that with a W126 some time ago, it has a control valve in the engine bay, which the 107 does not have, so start looking systematically for culprits. If the pump is not working properly, it does not stop when working pressure has been achieved. So if you got a component that is constantly using current, your battery goes flat after a short while. Put the car in the garage, switch it off, connect the multimeter, wait some minutes and you see voltage diminishing slowly. Then you need to check all components, all actuators, if they have some wrong or short circuit. Now something important, it is a trick. The pump creates a vacuum and the lines pass within the car body alongside underneath the doors to the back and at a specific spot next to the top mounting, the bearings of the rear shock absorbers, they touch the body without having a rubber foam pad between vacuum lines and body and over the years the lines move around wear and tear making pinholes where the line is not tight no more happens very often you need to remove the side panel of the jump seat to reach that place therefore remove the right hand side also where the tank door is a rubber padding of the size of a hand 
could have avoided it right from the factory. So this is top of the list to look for if central locking is not working properly. So sometimes the system is playing tricks on you. Locking mechanism of doors is working, but trunk lock and tank door cannot be opened. The schematics can be found in the service booklet which goes with the car probably buried in your glass compartment very well deep or also on the internet chapter central locking system. So this is it for today. Hope you have liked it. See you around next time. Take care everyone. Bye bye.